Jeff Ross and Jeff, thank you very much. Also on Tuesday, Dr. Murray sat down for his first interview with Gerald Posner, the chief investigative reporter for the DailyBeast.com. Gerald, good morning to you. Good morning, Matt. We, we heard in Jeff's piece that that guy said, look, you know, this way he gets to sit down when he, when he does his YouTube video. It's kind of a freebie. He doesn't get asked any probing questions. Did you get to ask probing questions or were there restrictions placed on you? Well, there were no restrictions. One of the things is, you know, I've been trying to get this for several weeks, and one of the attorneys in the firm had read my book on 9-11, and I had done two books in Texas, as you know, on Ross Perot and, and the Kennedy assassination. They were familiar with my work. It took a long time to get to sit with Dr. Murray. It happened by coincidence to be the day they released this video. But, you know, he wouldn't comment on things on the case, clearly, because an indictment is pending. So nobody's going to be able to ask him things about what happened with Michael Jackson. But he did talk in a very frank way, and he, and he comes over very personable. I must tell you, you know, six feet, five inches tall, lanky. He has this Caribbean tinted accent. He sat in the chair. He has these sort of expansive gestures. He talks very deliberately. He's very credible. What did he, he say about people. how his life has been since Michael Jackson's death? Here's his quote. He said, terrible. He has a bodyguard now. He's received death threats. Um, he, he's viewed the press. He sees the articles about him. He believes that what sells, as a matter of fact, um, are things that are more salacious is gossipy and just filled with bad news. When I asked him what his biggest worry was, he said it is being made a scapegoat. He, he talked quite passionately about his 20 years of medical service, how he had sold the house when he was 19 to get the money to go through medical school, and he said that he thought all of that was lost because, as he put it, he was the last man standing with Michael Jackson. And what was so irritating to him about that is that he was very adamant that he's not a concierge doctor, that he was not an enabling doctor, yet this is how he's being portrayed. And you know, before in the piece coming up to this, Matt, uh, you, you heard from some defense lawyers, or you know, uh, Jeff said that there were people who said he should never have spoken to the right. police. His attorneys are convinced that the nearly six hours of conversations that he has had with the police, he has never changed his story. And I don't know what that story is because they won't release it, right, but, but they say those are the facts that are going to get him exonerated. But clearly he's he, is, he is under suspicion. They may be trying to build a, a manslaughter case against him. They have checked. They've searched his storage space and his offices. Does he think charges will be brought? The, look, the attorneys believe that now that the prosecutors have it and are looking at it, they hope the charges won't be, be brought. But these are realists. The, the legal team are realists, and Dr. Murray is as well. One of the things he said, which I thought was intriguing, is that he doesn't just want to be acquitted. He used the word exonerated. And what he meant by that is he doesn't want an acquittal where somebody says, oh, you had a better witness. You, you know, you had Michael Bodden versus uh, Henry Lee, or you got off because right. the jury was in your favor. He wants an exoneration. And he really believes, this is a man, I will tell when I used to be a lawyer practicing, we used to rate witnesses as A to Fs. He's an A in terms of how he comes over. 